Hi guys, Retro Tango here. I'm gonna make a short, short video here because I just received my next Amiga 2000. One of my friends picked it up for me uh, about 200 kilometers from where I live and um, delivered it. I just got it home. I took off the screws and nothing else. I haven't opened it because as soon as you get an Amiga 2000, the first thing you want to do is to remove the battery because this one has been on storage for so many years and he doesn't know if it works. No, nothing. So uh, I assume that it's got a lot of battery damage. <laughs> I don't know. But I also have, have a lot of love for DOS computers and the seller also had this lovely lovely tulip very very small computer here i mean look at the size compared to the amiga 2000 it it seems like it's a uh, 386 but i'm not sure guys maybe i'll make a video with this one too it's a sweet little one so uh, let's just remove that and focus on the amiga 2000 <laughs> and let's see how it looks inside i have absolutely no idea so um yeah let's check it out guys oh we got some cards okay um oh i can uh, already see here it's got some water battery damage that's just not so good but we got a something with RAM over here. We got a hard drive controller and a hard disk here. No. Why is it like this side? No idea. So I just took off the screws there and um, I will just unplug the rest. It's got a hard disk here. Um, what? I have never ever in my life seen nothing like this before. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> never seen something like this before. So the oldest computer I had was the Commodore 64 G model. Then I jumped over to the Amiga 600. Then my 486 100 megahertz. What the hell is this? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, it's just a hard drive. Oh, it's uh, another type of IDE controller cables. As I can see, it gets power from here. Oh, this one must be really old. There we go. What? And we have the power connector here. I think we are good to go now. To pull off this one. Yeah. Oh no. We got something more in there. To the hard drive. But I can just. Oh, it's a really, really old hard disk. Really big one, too. <laughs> but let's check out the battery, guys. That's the most important. Oh. We got something here. Let's just take it off. Something on the CPU circuit. Oh, I hate this, but... Oh, look at this, guys. We got something here. It says... Motorola 68020 RC 12B. It's a O20 processor running maybe with 12 megahertz. I'm not sure. Never ever seen something like this before. And 68881. Oh, that's just nice. This one enables us to play. Test. It's from USA. This one enables this Amiga 2000 to play WSD load games. I mean, this little card is called CSA Midget Racer. 
CSA 1989. It's an old one. I mean, back in 89, have, having a O20 processor, processor, that's great. And it says B5810. Oh, that's nice. I really, really hope this one works. I mean, this is worth a lot for me. It's nice. I mean, having this Amiga 2000 as a 7 MHz machine with the 68,000 CPU, you can't really use it for WST.Gaming. Gaming. You can, but it's not that good. But with this one, it's a nice, nice computer. All right. Um, so next up, we got some, uh, can the camera pick this up? Yes, it can. We got some hack jobs over here. That does not look that great, but um, I have to figure that one out. And the water battery has made a lot of damage. We got some juice over here and we got it over here too. So the um, most of the times the trace is uh, one to five here. I have had some troubles with that. Those are the, uh, some of the traces here go over to the kickstart. So the motherboard does not boot up. I will, uh, of course, unsolder the battery. I will wash this board and uh, and look at what else we have got in here. <laughs> it's just, yeah, all right. Can I uh, pick this up like this? And is the cable long enough? Then I will just unscrew. I mean, I usually never ever make videos where I work with the Amigas. I just do fast forward because they're just not fun to look at. But now let's just do it like this for once. Okay, so this is just a hard drive. Hard drive number two. And oh, come on, there we go. Oh, it's a big, heavy, scarcity hard drive, Quantum. All right. I mean, this Amiga 2000 was, uh, <laughs> it was used. <laughs> Easy to see here. Okay. Nice. Okay, and we got the controller board here for the hard drive. I don't think it's got something uh, magical in it. Let's take a look, guys. But... Uh, I think it's just a normal uh, hard disk controller card. We got the LED. I hope I can save this board, <laughs> but it does not seem to be in that great of an order. Okay, these are the connectors that I have never seen before. Yeah. And this controller is called controller <laughs> from 1988. Let's see. They usually write something on the top here, but it does not look like that. It says something here. Copyright 1988 CMB. I don't know if this is the model number here. It just says controller gxb dash v i don't know just a scarcity controller we have the accelerator nice one and last but not least the ram board here is probably a Oh, it looks like it's fully populated. Maybe an eight megabytes of RAM inside. Yeah, not fully populated, but uh, it's all right. 1989, Supra, it's a Supra RAM, Amiga 2000, 246 or eight. It looks like we got six megs of RAM here and can be up to eight megabyte. I'm not sure, I don't even know if it works, but uh, it's great. It's a great card. I love it. 
Nice one. All right, guys. Let's take a closer look. Um, how do we do this? I'm not that familiar with filming and, and all that, but uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, damn. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Let's look at the, the battery damage here. Oh my God, it, we got juice everywhere. Damn. I mean, this does not look that good. What revision is this one? Damn, it's dusty. Revision six. Yeah, a lot of work, but I love saving these computers. Uh, what does it say? Version 2.04. The kickstart has been upgraded. That's nice. Amiga 2000. And let's look at the fat atmosphere. A372A. Yeah, we got. We can install some better fat agnuses in there. The 75 to get two megs of chip RAM. This one looks like having one meg of um, chip RAM. I really don't like this. So uh, as you can see, this connector is bent a little bit. So I have to take care of that one too. Maybe solder in a, a new one, but. I mean, having the juice over over here and oh damn, definitely needs a new socket too. Um, but the good part is this one looks all blank. I mean, if this one works, I would be I would just be so happy. Hey guys, maybe I can just install this in the in a standard Amiga five hundred. No, oh, that would be so awesome installing this in a I don't know my Omega 500 plus with two megs of chip RAM and putting this one in so it runs 020 I have to try that all right guys I just installed the CPU into my Omega 500 plus just for testing purposes this little midget razor now I just googled it shortly and uh, I found out that it runs uh, on um, 7 megahertz so it's an 020 that runs 7 megahertz well playing WSD lot games with the 6 shot 68000 uh, it doesn't have the instructions for doing the F10 quit and all that but upgrading to a 68010 uh, gives the Amiga more instructions and you can actually use WSD load gaming and press F10 and all that and uh, it quits game fast but using the O20 I don't care about the 7 megahertz this one just enables the ECS OCS system to play WSD load in, in as it should be you know uh, compatible no speed problems uh, so I just Unplug the 68,000, 7 megahertz, put in the <laughs> O20, again 7 megahertz. Uh, and I'm gonna turn it on for the first time in many, many years. I really hope that it works. I checked on the Amiga that um, Amiga 2000 that it was connected like this because it doesn't have that little thingy here. It doesn't show either on, on, on the back side. So, I I made sure that it, it should not be put on uh, reversed so um, it is put on the right way and I can uh, according to the manual I can choose uh, with the jumper if I want the FPU to run at about 33 megahertz or the internal clock on 7 megahertz so it's set on uh, 33 megahertz on the FPU and 7 megahertz here uh, these are not for RAM. This board does not have no RAM included. So let's just give it some power and see what's gonna happen. The boom test. It did not blow up. <laughs> That's oh, yes. All right. 
it works. I got a, uh, what's it called, GoCheck Drive installed here on my Amiga 500 Plus. So we got a picture, guys. That's awesome. It should show the 7 megahertz now. It's great. I'm so happy this little card runs. All right. So let's just make sure that it's 7 megahertz and it works as it should. Okay, we got sysinfo here, version 4.0. And let's just make a quick speed test. It should say 7 megahertz over here when it's ready. Yeah, it's the O20 with FPU. What can I say? 7 megahertz. That's just awesome, guys. This is this is great. And I'm using a as you can see, normal Amiga 500 Plus with 2 megs of chip RAM and nothing else. That's nice. All right, guys, this CPU works, but as I can see, it's just too big to fit an Amiga 500 case because uh, it works, but I don't think I will be able to uh, put on the put on the keyboard and, and, and close it down. Uh, I have some friends that uses their Amiga 500s open like this because of they want the chips to cool down and all of that, but I just like them closed, you know? <laughs> uh, so that's okay. Perfect, guys. All right, just a quick test. The CPU card works, so it did not get any damage uh, from the Vata battery, that's just great. Well, let's keep on looking at this Amiga 2000. I just love this. Nice. All right, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'm sorry about this video. This is not the type of videos I make, but um, yeah, let's just try this one too. This will be part one. I will return with another uh, with part two where I clean this test all the parts so i hope you will subscribe click on the ring button so you are ready when we launch part two until next time guys save some amigas <laughs> have a nice day bye